Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today I'm going to be taking you through our third video in our series on scatter plots and bivariate data. This is how to use that line of best fit that you've created. Now in our previous video, you would have created a line of best fit alongside me on a scatter plot. So we're going to talk about the different applications of that in this video. And this is for year 10 in the Australian curriculum, as well as some of our senior syllabuses, and particularly in Queensland, it covers in the year 12 general maths and essential maths syllabus. So in this video, we're going to look at a few different things. Firstly, we're going to use the line of best fit to find the equation of a line. Then you might be asking, why would I want to do that? Well, we're going to interpret some information from that line of best fit. We're going to use that line of best fit for interpolation and extrapolation. And we're going to understand what those dangers and limitations are. So that's what we're covering in this particular video. So strap in, let's go and look at how to find the equation of a line of best fit. Now you would recall from grade nine, that the equation of a line is in the form of y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient and c is the y-intercept. Now, if you would also hopefully recall that our equation for gradient is rise over run. Also, it's the difference in our y-coordinates divided by the difference in our x-coordinates. And that makes sense because our y-coordinates are all about rise and our x-coordinates are all about run. Now, if we've drawn that line of best fit properly on our scatter plot, we're going to have two lines that we can, two points that we can select from the line, and we can use those to find the gradient of the line, and then choose one of those points then to find the y-intercept. And that's why it's really important that when you are drawing your line of best fit as best as possible, that you join two of those scatter plot dots into that line as well, and that makes it a true line of best fit, and then you can definitely make conclusions about your gradient from that line. Okay, so we're going to use a worked example right throughout this video. It's a little comparison of English grades to French grades. And basically what you can see there is on the x-axis, our independent variable is the English grade and the dependent variable on the y-axis is our French grade. Now we need to take this scatter plot that's been kindly drawn for us and two points from the line which have been indicated and we're going to use those two points to find our equation for our line of best fit. And then I'm going to do a whole lot of things with this particular scenario right throughout the video. Okay, so we've identified those two points. Now this is something um, I always say to students is to make sure you either label the points with x1, y1, x2, y2, or state what your variables are. And I've stated those here. Either way is fine. So you could just draw those um, little labels onto the graph. And the reason for this is, is that often when you're trying to do this process of substituting into the formula, then a lot of people make the mistake of taking a y coordinate here and then the wrong x coordinate there and they get things back to front. They end up with a gradient with the wrong sign in front of it or they end up with things back to front completely or they end up with x coordinates on the numerator and vice versa. So label your points first before you get started and that way you won't make any mistakes. So let's substitute that information now that we've created into our gradient. We're going to find the gradient is equal to 3 fifths. Okay, so we're going to use that information now that we've got the gradient and find the y-intercept. So we're back to this equation of the line now. We know that that m value is 3 fifths and all we've got left are three variables, a y, an x and a c. We're trying to find c. Now we've got two points. Those two points are on the line. So therefore, because they are on the line, they are going to be able to be substituted their x and their y coordinates into the, into the actual equation and the equation will work. It'll be balanced on both sides. So let's substitute in our easiest point. I always choose the point with the smallest numbers, a point that's got no negatives preferably, or even with no fractions in the actual coordinates. So we're going to choose 2030. That's the smallest one, easiest to work with. So if we substitute that in now and find 3 fifths of 20, then we're going to find that 3 fifths of 20 is 12, take 12 away from both sides, and we've got a y-intercept of 18. So now we've got our final step we need to put c equals 18 back into our equation. I often find a lot of students seem to get to this point and they forget to actually state the equation of the line, which is y equals 3 fifths x plus 18. They kind of just leave it hanging there as c is equal to 18 and don't actually finish the job and lose some valuable marks along the way. Okay, so now we've found this equation. What do we do? What do we do now? Well, it's really important to be able to explain the impact 
of the elements of the equation, which is our gradient and our y-intercept on our real life con context. And this is part, an important part of both our Queensland syllabuses for general maths and for essential maths in units one, three, and four. Now, um, I've just put those there just to show you how important that is. So if you're creating an assignment on bivariate data, which a lot of people in general maths and essential maths may end up doing, it's really important that once you've found that equation of your line, that you actually do the job of explaining what that means to the real life context. Also, I've seen in exams where people are asked to develop an equation of a line of best fit or even a least squares regression line and then interpret that line. And I see a lot of students leave that blank because they just don't know what's being asked of them when they're asked to interpret information. So I'm going to take you through what that means now. Firstly, we found the equation. Now we know C is our y-intercept and that is 18. So what that's telling us in the context of this particular question is that the minimum possible grade that can be achieved for French, which was on our y-axis, using that model is going to be 18%. So that means it's impossible, using the model, for anyone to get less than 18% in French. And I'm sure there'd be a lot of French students out there that'd be very pleased by that information. Um, although 18%, not great. Okay, so that's what that's telling us. That's our bottom, our minimum, because you can't get... Um, once that passes through the y-axis and it's now going to pass into negative quadrants, that means you're going to have negative values for x, which is your English grade. Not possible to have a negative English grade. So therefore, our minimum for French is 18%. Also, we found a gradient was 3 fifths. It's also important to interpret this part of the equation as well. Now, firstly, that gradient number is positive. And that means that the correlation is going to be positive. So what that means is that as French marks increase, sorry, as English marks increase, the French marks will also increase. And that's an important statement to make, that as one is growing, the other also increases. If it was negative gradient, for example, you'd be saying that as the, French, the English marks increase, the, English, the French marks would be going down. So that's important that you understand the difference between negative and positive gradient. We can also interpret some information about the numbers in the gradient as well, the three and the five. Firstly, remember, the formula is rise over run. So what that's saying is, is that for every 5% that that English mark is increasing and running across that x-axis, the French mark is going to improve by 3% according to this model. It might not actually be what happens in real life, but in this model, it's saying that there is a correlation between your English mark and your French mark, and that if you improve your English by 5%, well, you're not going to improve your French by as much, but it's going to go up as well. Another way of saying that would be that for every 1% your English mark increases, your French mark is going to increase by 0.6% because that three-fifths converted into a percentage is 0.6 of a percent. Okay, we're now going to talk about interpolation. Interpolation is the process or method of estimating or predicting a value using or from within the range of existing values. Now, it's important that you understand what your range is. Your range consists of the points furthest to the left and farthest to the right. Anything beyond that is not interpolation. Interpolation happens where those dots are taking place on your scatter plot. Our line of best fit can be then used in two ways, either using the graph or using algebra to make predictions. And that's what we want to do with interpolation is make predictions. So let's do it with a graph. Firstly, we're going to look at a student's English grade, which was 50%, and we're going to use that to estimate what their French grade might be. So you need a ruler for this one. You're going to take from 50% on the axis, x-axis, and you're going to draw a line vertically, perfectly vertically, up to the line, and then you're going to annotate that on the graph. Annotate just simply means you're going to make the notations on the actual graph out to the y-axis. It's also a good idea to pop in the coordinates of the point you found where you intersected with that line of best fit. So what I can make a statement here is, is that if a person's English grade was 50%, then their French grade is going to be about 48% approximately. We could do this a lot more, I guess, uh, correctly and accurately by using algebra. Because sometimes when we use a graph, it's very difficult. We're making guesses when we're in between numbers. So we're going to use our algebra now with our equation of our line by substituting in the x value of 50 into the equation. We're going to get a French grade, which is the y value out. 
So let's find three fifths of 50, that's 30, add 18, we get a mark of 48. Or let's write a statement, the French grade is going to be 48% when the English grade is 50%. So that's interpolation using algebra. Now, we can also, a lot of people think interpolation is only about substituting into the x-axis, getting an answer out on the y-axis. But interpolation can also go in the other direction. We can actually go from a y value and get an x value. So in this case, we've got a French grade of 35%. We're going to substitute 35 for y into the equation. And we're going to find that the value of the English grade was 28%. Also important to write a statement because there's no x and y values in the question. So just remember, interpolation can go in two directions, but it's always within the data set that you've already sampled. So there are some things to remember with interpolation. Firstly, predictions using interpolation are going to be a lot more reliable when you've got strong correlation. If you've got perfect correlation, then you're going to be able to make pretty spot on predictions. However, as our correlation starts to get weaker, our predictions become a lot less reliable. So that's what I've just said there. As that correlation moves towards moderate or weak or even no correlation, then that model, that equation of the line of best fit, it starts to become less useful for those predictions. And be aware that we are just making predictions using a sample of data. Um, as with any sample, it's not always going to be completely representative of a population unless we sample the whole population. And as with any prediction, there is always a margin for error. So this is something to be important um, to be aware of, particularly if you're writing a problem solving and modeling task. This is something you can use to evaluate the reasonableness of your results. So you've come up with an equation of a line of best fit. You may have to do some interpolation with that. You're going to want to talk about in a paragraph, first of all, your interpretation of that line of best fit using the gradient and the y-intercept, but then also how reasonable is that equation for making predictions. So you're going to be talking about the correlation, what impact that has on interpolation, and also the fact that it is still purely a prediction from a sample of a population. Let's move on and talk a little bit about extrapolation now. Extrapolation is the process of making those predictions from outside your existing values. So we had some scattered plot dots in the middle. We're now going beyond the known information. And the QCAA gives a great definition here in their syllabus for essential maths. It says that extrapolation is the process of extending or projecting known information to the unknown by assuming, so assumptions here, that those existing trends are going to continue and continue to be applicable. So that's an assumption that you might be thinking about making in your assignments, assumed that when you do an extrapolation, that the situation is going to be the same as what you've done when you've created your line of best fit. So let's do some extrapolation now with our example that we've been using throughout the video. So we can see our range of X values, our English grades, falls between approximately 17 and 70. So if I make any predictions at all from 0 to 17 or from 70 above, that's extrapolation. People often think that extrapolation is only about the upper end, but it can include some of those minimum numbers as well. We also see that we've got a range of French grades and they fall between about 21 and 62. Now, a lot of people are also under the misguided impression that extrapolation only occurs on your x-axis, but you've also got um, predictions you can make from your y-axis as well. So outside that range of data is also extrapolation. Now, when you're making predictions using extrapolation, it's really important to remember that they are a lot less reliable than interpolation. And there's good reasons for that. Sometimes models have limitations. So in our particular one, we've been looking at grades. Grades don't go lower than 0%, and I'm sure some of you are saying, thank goodness for that. And they don't go above 100% either. So to make extrapolation beyond certain limitations means you're going to be moving into the realm of the impossible. Also, we do have some linear models that look like a linear model when you're looking at a very small data set, but it actually might be part of a non-linear model and you've just taken a little snippet of it. So to make assumptions that it's going to remain linear forever is not necessarily correct. It might be exponential or it might be a, um, a non-other non-linear model. Now, the further away that you do your extrapolation from your original data range, the more unreliable those predictions are going to be. And this is why it's considered dangerous to rely on those kinds of predictions. And you'll see the word dangers of extrapolation in your syllabus. So that's just something to be aware of. The further away you get from that data, 
the more unreliable it is. Just remember it. Okay, so let's do some extrapolation. It's basically the same process as interpolation. We're just simply either annotating on our graph using a ruler and making judgments by sight, or we're using our equation and doing some substitution. So we'll do that, and I'll show you through the process along the way how extrapolation can be dangerous. So in this case, we've got an English grade of 10%. We're going to estimate their French grade by annotating on our graph. And we can see that we've got a French grade of approximately, yeah, it's about 24%. Okay, let's try that using some algebra now. So we substitute x equals 10, putting that into the equation now, and we get oh, 24%. My judgment by sight wasn't too bad after all. So we need to make sure we write a statement. The student's grade is estimated to be 24%. And if you were asked to comment on the dangers of extrapolation here, this would be a good place to do it. The student's grade is estimated to be 24%. However, because the extrapolation technique has been used, it is not a reliable estimate. You could also substitute in a French grade of 80%. Now, if we substitute 80% in, you can see it follows through, we're going to get an English grade of 103%. Now, this is where the model completely falls over. They've estimated that the English grade is 103% and that is impossible. So this is a perfect example of one of the dangers of extrapolation. What this is implying to us is that it's impossible for a French student to get 80%. Now, we all know that French students frequently get 80% and above, but this is implying that you can't do that according to this model. So that's why sometimes it's very dangerous to rely on extrapolation because it draws causes us to draw conclusions that just aren't so. Well, that's all we have time for in this video today. Let me tell you a little bit about what's coming up in the next video. We're going to use technology to draw a scatter plot using Microsoft Excel and Desmos. So if you're not great with either of those software packages, that would be a great one for you to stay tuned for. And the best way to stay tuned is to like and subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit your notifications button to be told about the future videos. I'm also going to be finishing off this video series with some other upcoming videos. I'm going to talk about Pearson's correlation coefficient, the coefficient of determination, and this is mainly for our senior syllabuses. We're going to look at the equation of our trend line using linear regression, which is an algebraic process, quite complicated and good to know. We're also going to use a calculator to calculate linear regression and solve some complex problems from things like the uh, public mock paper and also the QCAA online syllabuses. So thank you so much for joining me today. It's been lovely having you. I hope you've enjoyed the beautiful background. It's a photograph I took in Bryce Canyon, which is one of my favourite places in the world. Have a lovely day. See you next time.